but I will need this handsome man again. For the first method, divide the watermelon into eight pieces. Cut the pulp from the crust. Now we'll make several vertical incisions and slightly shift the resulting pieces inside the watermelon rind. For the second method, we will need a quarter of a watermelon. To begin with, we make several vertical incisions. Now we make horizontal incisions to get watermelon. Now separate the pulp from the crust. The slicing is ready and the crust will be served as a plate. It's easy to pick up watermelon cubes with a fork. For the third method, divide the watermelon in half. We will lay one of the halves on the table and make cuts along and across. This way we will get the watermelon pieces that are convenient to take with your hands and the crust can always be put back in place. This time, we will take half a watermelon and gradually cut off all the peel from it. And we will cut according to the same principle as in the third method. Take a deep bowl, cover the watermelon with it and turn it over. Now the whole watermelon is in the plate. Stick wooden skewers into all these pieces for conveniences. For the fifth method, take half of the watermelon and divide it lengthwise into three parts. Stick skewers along each of the three parts. We will make incisions across so that each skewer has its own piece. A coin will do for slicing watermelon. A small press on the coin and the watermelon peel lends itself. Let's make our shallow incisions around the perimeter of the watermelon. And now it remains to deliver one accurate blow. You can use a spoon or you can use your hands. Even tastier, don't you think? And the seventh way will be really very unusual. For this trick, we will need two watermelons of the same size. We will divide the first watermelon in half and scrape all the pulp out of it so that the walls are completely clean. These are empty halves of watermelon. Let's take the second watermelon. We'll cut off all the peel from it. Let's give it one more even shape. And then we will put out our peeled up pulp into an empty shell of the first watermelon. We trim the excess. The halves have closed. It remains only to wipe the pulp from the damp sponge. Here's such an unusual serving for a watermelon we got. Let's check with the special knife for slicing watermelon. Cut off the watermelon base and install it for slicing. We insert the knife and press it with all our might. It seems to be stuck. We'll have to split the watermelon in half. We have to take out all the knife and get several perfectly sliced pieces at once. And finally, another special knife for slicing watermelon. Let's take half a watermelon and just draw this knife across the pole. These are the neat semi-circular pieces of watermelon we got. Let's take an ordinary apple and a large magnet. Of course, the magnet does not affect the apple in any way. But what if you put two apples on a wooden stick and balance them in the air? Now, you can see that the magnet still causes small fluctuations in the apple. It seems that there really is a lot of iron in this fruit. This trick is also great with grapes. Who would have thought that fruits and berries can be magnetic? We will install the magnet on the stand and take a couple of needles on a thread. As you can see, they immediately begin to reach for it, pulling the threads. Now we're heating up the needles as it seems they're starting to lose the interest in the magnet. And they fall completely. If you hold magnet over matches, then the effect will follow. But if you let them burn out, they immediately 
require magnetic properties. And not only a big magnet, but with such a small one. How is this possible? Let's try again with color matches. At last, nothing comes out with them. Let's take 4 magnets and 16 steel balls. Now, we'll open up the plastic baseboard and place them inside as follows. Push a lonely ball to the nearest magnet and BAM! All the balls have changed their position. And the extreme one flew out the baseboard at a decent speed. This is a real magnetic rifle. Pour some PVA glue into a bowl. Add some steel spraying and bright gouache. Mix the mass until smooth. And now add sodium and we'll mix it until the mass turns into real slime. But this is not just your ordinary slime. It's worth bringing a magnet and see what happens. Slime envelops any source of magnetism like a living slime. It's not easy to tear it off now. Holding the magnet at a distance, you can see how the slime seems to be pulling a tentacle towards it. Because of this, he really looks like something's alive. Just look how strongly this mass is drawn to the magnet. Much more interesting than your usual slime, right? Let's take a small plastic bottle, make a funnel out of a piece of paper, and pour some printer ink inside. Using a syringe, add alcohol inside until the bottle is filled. Close the lid tightly, and now put a magnet to the walls. Look what's going on inside. The magnet seems to purify alcohol from ink. They literally separate from each other. See how beautiful it can look, like a black waterfall that is directed upwards. All ink, no matter how well it has been stirred, will still be attracted to the magnet. Let's take another look at how quickly alcohol will become transparent again under the influence of a powerful magnet. An amazing sight, like a liquid hourglass. Let's take a new batch. Let's take a new batch of powder ink and mix it with oil. Pour a little in the glass and with the help of a magnet, we will get an unusual drawing tool. We do not recommend repeating this trick at home. We will bring the magnet to a laptop screen and it immediately goes out. 
Even a small magnet is enough. But remember that it can end badly for technology. Mysterious things also happen to a smartphone. When a magnet approaches, the screen goes out and lights up again. Let's take an ordinary magnet. As you can see, it is perfectly attracted to iron. But what if we heat it up the same way we heated the needles? After the magnet has become so hot, it's no longer attracted to iron. But even after it cools down, the magnetic properties will not return. Even another magnet can't move it anymore. 